Hey everybody, my friend Tim Friedlander over at Soundbox LA let me know that there is a new version of Zoom out that has pro audio users in mind. And so any of you who have more complicated audio interfaces, not just like a single or two channel interface like many people, but if you're using things that are more complicated with more channels like a Rodecaster Pro or an Apollo, you might want to know this. So in the new versions of Zoom, and you have to be running, it looks like, what's the most up-to-date version? 5.13.6 is the most up-to-date debugged version of Zoom. If you install that and go to the audio settings, you'll see a new checkbox. It literally says new. And it says use specific audio input channels. So why is this helpful? One thing that always bugged a lot of us about Zoom is that it listens to every single input channel on your device at all times. And what that causes is problems with loopbacks where Zoom will hear itself coming back from your monitoring. Again, it doesn't happen on the simple two-channel interfaces, but it does happen on the more complicated multi-channel interfaces. So now I can tell Zoom which channels to actually record. Finally, I check this box and it pops out audio input channels. And now I can tell it exactly which channels I want to record. And you'll notice by default, it listens to all of them. And since I'm using an Apollo, I have a lot of channels to choose from. The Apollo, even though it only has two microphone inputs, is technically a 14 input device because the sound driver has 14 possible inputs. By going to IO matrix, you'll see there they are. 14 channels of inputs are possible. I've greatly modified my setup so that, as you can see, there's only a few input channels available it's because of things like Zoom, wanting to hear everything all the time. So now, let's say in my case, I've made aux one be my mix just for zooming. Now I can turn off all the other channels. I'll clear all of them and I'll say, listen to only channel one. And now Zoom will hear only channel one. So if I go into my console, I've set up aux one with my microphone and aux one is what's feeding Zoom. If I pull it down, you'll notice the input level on Zoom's input meter following the fader as I pull my aux and one up and down. Before, it wouldn't even matter so much because it would use all the channels all the time. So whether I was using aux one or aux two, feeding into Zoom. I couldn't control the two aux mixes independently. Clear selection, choose channel one because that's where my aux one is assigned. And now Zoom only hears aux one. It's a beautiful thing. So if I'm doing a recording session with a client and they want to hear a playback of a take that I just finished, I just load my take. Let's just load something, whatever I recorded recently. Hey everybody, George the Tech. Now that's bleeding in from my monitors, so I'll turn off my monitor speakers and I'll go ahead and say, I want that playback to be heard. So I'm gonna unmute the sends on my playback channel. Let's try it out. It's an Ask Me Anything with Michael Pearson Adams from Waves Audio. And here to tell you more about it is the man himself. Well, it's gonna be cool. I'm really glad. Hey everybody, George the Tech. I want to let you know about a cool event we have coming up that's totally free. It's an Ask Me Anything with Michael Pearson Adams from Waves Audio. And here to So there you have it. As you can see, total control over what Zoom hears, finally, at long last. And it's awesome. If you don't have a more sophisticated audio routing mixer setup like I do in my Apollo, let's say you do want to have recording and playback show up in Zoom. If you have a way to route playback into an input channel, you could, for example, have playback show up on channel two. So have channel two be your playback and Zoom will hear your playback for you. Some audio interfaces have this sort of loopback feature, but the loopback shows up on channels, say three and four. If you want that loopback to be in Zoom, then check channel three. And now whatever you play back will be heard on Zoom. Thank you, Zoom, for doing this. Thanks, Tim Friedlander, who really reached out to Zoom, had a meeting with Zoom, talked to Zoom about how to better utilize Zoom with pro audio users. 
to they finally baked it in and we're really grateful for that anyway this is george the tech hope you found that helpful for more helpful videos and just more general information about setting up your voiceover studios head over to george the dot tech